Hi everyone and welcome to Disc Golf Valley Tips and Tricks. Today we're going to be doing our practice round of Highlander's Ridge. Show you a few tips and tricks to help you along your journey towards the three stars. It's a lovely course and uh, fairly easy to get your three stars on. Um, there's just a few things that we should probably point out and talk about uh, to help you get down the road towards your three stars. The first hole, I usually use a musket roll disc. The flow disc here is uh, very close to that, and so I think we can get away with that. Let's give it a try. I put my pointer down about halfway down that bank and put quite a bit of a hyzer on that. We want to have it come in under the branches there but uh, slide around and uh, then just an easy toss into the basket. Now, if you don't have that flow disc, in a recent uh, three star, we did get a musket. I think this is the first musket that has shown up for our disc rewards for uh, challenging the valley. So let's give it a try. It's only a windbreak attribute. Uh, but I think it'll work here. We just put our pointer about the same place and put a little hyzer on that. Should come swinging around. And uh, fortunately, there's a little fence there that <laughs> stopped it. And straddle this tree here. And. We're shooting downhill, so we make adjustments for that, and in it goes. So that's the play on that one. I think we can move on. On this hole, you'll notice that there is a mando that you have to go around. Uh, and uh, it's kind of a small opening there, so it's a little tricky when you first start working with this. I think we could probably get away with the musket windbreak. Uh, see here let's slide over a bit open up that gap a little bit but uh, let's keep our pointer about there because we're going to put a little bit of an anheuser on this and let it hit that bank come back down and nicely rest right at the basket sometimes uh, this will actually skip into the basket, you know, bounce off that bank and go into the basket for an ace, and that's always nice when you get that. Let's see what other discs we have to work with here. I would say that either the 9 or the 7 here would probably work as well. Let's check out the Explorer here, see how that... It should get there no problem. Uh, I guess we have to learn the how much hyzer to put on that. Let's try a rethrow. There, that's more like it. Let's try the nine. Woo! That might be just a little too much at least fully extended let's try holding up a little bit so pull it down and then just come back a little bit see if that works with the nine speed there i think that's going to be yeah see that's what i'm talking about for an ace about there and hold up a little bit Ooh. So, anywhere from 7 to 10. You might even be able to get away with 5-speed uh, here, because it's a short distance. Not the fuse, because that fuse just flies too straight, but I think this claymore, we could do something with that. Yeah, see, that's no problem as well. So a wide range of discs work on that. Just find something in your bag that uh, is in that range and uh, learn what you have to do with that before you go for your three stars. All right, next hole. 
Now, by default, uh, the game um, suggests a forehand here, but I've never been able to get the forehand to really work well. And so I always switch that to a backhand. And you want a good distance driver with uh, preferably a big skip attribute. Although we can try the strive light as well here. But put your pointer about there. Check the wind because that can really affect things here. And then put a little bit of an Anheuser on that. You want that to come around the tree and... Uh, skip up the hill and uh, <laughs> from here you can see the basket uh, let's maybe use the claymore here so that we can get a little bit of a fade on it and 53 something about there yeah so there you go for an eagle. Let's try out this strive disc with the light attribute. Let's just change that to backhand. Oh, we've got a nice wind at our back. This is probably going to make it without any difficulty. Oh, look at that lift up. Will it get over the fence? Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, all the way over. It's nice when you have the wind at your back like that. Can we see the basket? Not very well. But with this pure disc, we might be able to swing around. Let's put our pointer about there and put a little hyzer on that. It's downhill a little bit. Yeah. Okay, here's one where the wind isn't at our back so much. Let's see if we can get uh, this strive to make it all the way. Switch it to backhand. And put a little bit Anheuser on that. And ooh, it might get slowed up in the trees here. But it does make it. So I think you'd be okay with that, even if you don't have the big skip distance driver. As long as you have one of those strives or some distance driver that has the light attribute, you should be fine. Well, there's no way the fuse is going to make that basket. Uh, let's try the claymore. 77. Let's maybe bring it down to about there. Oh, that's going to hit some leaves. Oh, well, we still end up with a birdie. And that's all you really need. All right, hole number four. Now, the drive on this one, I have found what works the best is a, a distance driver with a roll attribute. The thing I've found, though, is that with this drive, I have to put my pointer more like about there but if you have like the rive distance driver with the roll attribute you need to be more like about there so depending on what distance driver you're working with you might have to experiment with this a little bit and then uh, straight down almost that should come swinging around <laughs> that put us up the hill a ways but uh, we should still be able to come back 124 hmm what have we got? Ay, 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 ay. I think I'm going to have to go with a strive disc on this, but not pull it down all the way. That would just be too much. And then come back for the birdie. And that's more like what we're looking for. That brings us close enough to the basket that we can get away with either the flow disc or the lots. I probably wouldn't try the Explorer. Let's go with the flow disc. That should make it. Let's 
Still a little short. Ideally, uh, when you're building your bag, you do want um, a 10 speed that has an extra glide in it as well. We haven't picked one of those up yet. A musket 10 speed extra glide uh, works well here as well. All right, let's move on. Okay, hole number five. And if you take a look at the map, you'll see that uh, we have to go through the gateway to this castle and up and around. And uh, this uh, has the potential for an eagle. Let's see if we can pull this off. It's nice if you have a distance driver with a skip attribute here to get started. And uh, you put it up about there. And depending on the direction of the wind, you might have to make some adjustments there. I'm going to go skipping up the hill. And this can be a little deceptive. Looks fairly easy, only 34 meters. But because you're going uphill, you have to make some adjustments. But you don't want to overcompensate because then you go over the ridge and or the, the fence, the wall, and uh, end up uh, going out of bounds. So 34 meters, but you want to adjust for the change in elevation, something like that. And in it goes. So eagles are possible. Let's try it again. In this wind, I think I'll not put too much of an Anheuser on that. Uh, wind should just take it away there. There we go. And kind of the same distance as last time. But the wind is right in our face. Nope. So we'll have to be satisfied with a birdie. All right, hole number six. All right. Um, don't have my normal disc for this, but the flow should actually work fine. And we change it to a forehand. This wind is going to take it a little further than we'd normally like, but so maybe we'll hold back just a little bit. That should come swinging around. Could have gone out of bounds there, had a fortunate bounce. But you have to stay within a very defined area here otherwise you're out of bounds so you don't want to use a disc that just slides away on you let's try again see if we can get away with oh the musket windbreak should be fine here yeah let's try that change it to forehand and Try a little bit more of a straight pull down, I guess, is what we need for that musket. Yeah, that works pretty good. Let's test that out one more time. That's pretty close to the line. That musket seems to work fine. Kind of a nasty wind here, so we might compensate a little bit. But all works out. And I think we can move on. All right, hole number seven. Now, this can actually be a challenging hole to get your birdie on and it can be a little bit frustrating because here you are all the way down to hole number seven working on your three stars and you blow it on here you have to start over again so it's good to spend some time on this one for sure and uh, given the discs that we have in our bag I'm not really sure we have the best options here to work with 
Let's try the flow disk, see how that works. It's not sure that it has uh, the oomph that we need to get up that hill. Let's give it a try. Well, at least it makes it in the uh, inbound area. Here, let's maybe go with the fuse here. And... So that seems to work, but I want to confirm that. Let's replay the whole, because I've never really done this with the flow disk before. Oh, here's an interesting wind. Let's maybe bring our pointer over a bit, and I think we can go ahead and just pull straight down. And, ooh, that doesn't look good. Ah, we're okay. But I'm still not confident with it. <laughs> Let's try it one more time. If you don't have a flow disc, um, a musket. Let's maybe try the musket here. The windbreak musket to see what that does it. Yeah, that might be a good option if you don't have the flow disc. If you've got that musket, which you should have. Okay, well, I, um, I think we're going to be okay. I was a little concerned, given the discs we have in our bag. Uh, if you have, I think it's the Grace 11 speed, that seems to work good here. All right, hole number eight. And if you have a distance driver with a big skip, that's what you want to use here. On a windy day, you might not want to put too much of an Anheuser on that. Boy, that wind didn't take it at all. <laughs> Fortunately, I think we're going to be okay. I'll just straddle this a little bit. Hmm. Let's go forehand and maybe take the clay more. Boy, just afraid we're going to hit that rock there. But we got out. And finish up for birdie. But let's see if we can't make that uh, drive look a little better. Actually, I think that uh, we could also use the Strive Extra Glide here and uh, still do all right. So if you don't have a big skip uh, distance driver, let's see how this does. Yeah, it even skipped a little bit and went a little ways. So that uh, is perfectly fine. Let's use a forehand here and... You may be tempted to go for it, but if you miss the basket, you can go quite a ways down the hill here and it might be difficult to come back. So I usually just lay up here. Alright, hole number nine, the last hole, and this hole can really mess you up. And it's frustrating because here it is, you're going for your three stars, you're doing great, and you come to this hole and you mess up and you have to start over again. You've probably already experienced that. In fact, that may be the reason why you're watching this video, is hole number nine. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of good discs to uh, show you how to do this hole. Let's try with the flow and see how that works. Oh, we've got a nasty wind too. Let's maybe come down a bit and 
put quite a bit of an Anheuser on that against this wind. That's actually not a bad place to be there. Um, it's better than being over the hill down the gully. Because uh, you can usually get it from here. Now in this wind, I don't know. Yeah. Get a different wind condition. Here we go. All right, let's try that flow again in this wind condition. And I think I'm still going to put quite a bit of an Anheuser on that. Let it go off to the left and then just come back a little bit so that it hits that first wall that's still built up there because you don't want to go through the little hole in the fence there because that'll cost you. All right, and from here, should be able to get this. Let's see if we got anything else in the bag that will work. Try the nine speed here. Well, that one didn't come back like we would like. Try that again. Of course, that one's going to go through the hole in the fence. So this shows you what you need to do when you're on your practice mode is decide what disc you're going to use for this hole and uh, practice it till you get it right. And you almost have to kind of do it over and over again in different wind conditions and memorize them. Well, that worked out. Let's see what the 7 will do, the Explorer. Basically, we just want to get to the, the base of this channel. There, hey, that works out pretty good. Maybe I've been using the wrong disc for this all these years. I have to try that again. Maybe it just worked the once there. Well, that worked out. Of all the holes on this course, this is probably the hole that you should spend the most time practicing. I'll just lay it out there for you. That's kind of ideal. That's kind of what you're wanting to do. Yeah. From back here, it's usually fairly easy to get in. All right, well, there you go, Highlander's Ridge. I hope you were able to pick up a few tips there. And uh, next time, we'll actually go for our three stars. If you haven't already done so, I invite you to subscribe to our channel. We'll see you next time here at Disc Golf Valley Tips and Tricks. So long for now.